Okay, hello, welcome back. So, right, we'll have a look at all deterioration, uh, P253F. Now, looking at the uh, Puma manual, this is the Puma 2.2 manual, which you can find on the internet. This gives you a whole range of DTCs and the codes. Oil engine deterioration, the engine module has detected deterioration in the engine oil. Check the oil level is correct uh, or does not compare, appear contaminated. Renew or top up as required. It would be expected that a vehicle like this that does a lot of uh, work um, standing and the PTO running while it's working, then you're going to have uh, things like oil deterioration and also DPF problems. So it's uh, something to keep in mind. Right, so customers authorised a full service, which includes uh, engine oil change, filters and such like. Drain plug here. 13 mil spanner. Now the workshop manual will actually uh, give you the details. I'll show you a uh, an older type filter which is relevant. Um, this is the Ford type uh, plastic cap with a disposable element. However, this vehicle that we're working on doesn't have it. It has a spin on the filter. So techie information here, the drain plug is done up to 23 newton meters, which means not that tight. So a little pull with a hammer, oh, the spanner I mean. What they do recommend is uh, install a new drain plug, which we do every service. However, you can just buy the O-ring, um, which is the important bit. This is the bit which give you this, gives you the seal and the locking effect, okay? So you can just uh, pull this out and change it and use the drain, same drain plug again. Um, it's your choice. We always, uh, as the manual states, to uh, change the drain plug. That's exactly what we do. So this is just a little cheap uh, trick you can do. Also had a little bit of a disaster here because the uh, EP oils ran out. However, there was still a little bit of oil in there and air. You can see it spattered everywhere and uh, caused a right mess. Uh, however, this is rectified now. It's just one of those things. You never know when things are going to run out. As you can see how messy that actually is. So, uh, yeah, it cleaned it up, Steam cleaned it. Right, so um, what we're going to do here now is uh, go for um, the uh, resetting. And this is in the special functions, okay? Now you have an all change reset in here. Uh, basically, just uh, follow the instructions and uh, continue, keep pressing yes, 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 until it has reset the system. Once it knows that it's uh, um, the oil's been changed and you've reset it, that's fine. Okay. Always be aware that the battery voltage should be above 12.5 volts. Okay, so that's you really need a fully charged battery or put a battery charger on it to keep the voltage up. Yeah. So anyway, the, a lot of readers, a lot of scanners will actually let you do this. If they give you the special functions, facilities, great. If not, then you'll have to uh, find some other way of doing it. Uh, I find this uh, snap on the equipment quite good because I can do this with uh, all the vehicles, all the small vehicles that I service. Okay. Okay, um, so anyway, after then, I just want to show you this because this is quite interesting. There's a vehicle reset uh, button which has actually appeared recently. And basically this is if it has a brain freeze or a lockout or a lockup. Um, basically it's the same as switching your computer off and switching it back on again. Yeah, You can disconnect the battery for 15 seconds, it does the same thing. However, this runs through all the uh, ECUs. This one here was just uh, doing the instrument panel. Okay, Reset, 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 reset. Does all of the ECUs and then uh, basically once it's complete it will tell you that it is. You then have to run through to make sure that any DTCs that have been uh, generated by doing this have, uh, have then you need to then wipe them. Right, so getting back to the, uh, the problem we had which we were dealing with uh, last uh, video was a, a cooked up wheel bearing yeah and i told you about this uh, completely melted and i had to cut through it and i cut through the spacer as well now the spacer is uh, actually quite important i don't know what color band this is because it got a bit too hot anyway it's a new stub axle new hub new disc uh, new wheel bearings now uh, this is a new space and I'm going to explain about this because this will help you uh, to understand adjusting wheel bearings Okay, it's not actually adjusting wheel bearings. It's setting the end float to zero So basically um, what you do is you'll assemble the bearings with a spacer in there and I'll explain which one it is I set the torque to 210 Newton meters 
Okay, you can see a rather big torque wrench does go up a bit higher. Right, so the one I uh, fitted was 15.5 millimeters, which is purple one. And uh, between all the spacers, they're color coded and they have a uh, certain size. It goes from 15.5 to 14.9. Now, what you have to do is measure the end float, okay, and when you get the uh, reading then basically you have to order the color coded spacer because store men are not actually that bright they don't measure stuff so what they uh, what they'll do is just look for something like uh, a blue um color and then uh, order that okay so if you have an end flow of 0 0.20 then that will be a, a blue code there is basically only 0.6 uh, of a mil between the largest and the smallest. This one being the largest one, I'm not going to uh, say the amount of zeros on here, but this is uh, the one that you would use um, to get uh, to generate some end flow, and then you can work it out from there. So basically, uh, what we're doing is uh, fitting this spacer. This is a bit of brain damage because there's no color code on it. So if you get one like this, make sure you measure it. Um, you push the hub like so, so you can read your um, end float, okay, the amount of movement there is. We're looking for zero end float with no uh, preload. So looking at this one, you can see the amount of movement there is. We want to remove that movement so the bearings are uh, closer together, as it were. Okay. So using the largest spacer, okay, this is a TOF uh, one with loads of zeros, and this is the purple uh, um, designation, okay, that I said already is the largest one. So uh, if you think about it logically, 15.5 is the biggest. So when you find end float, what you're looking for is to then uh, minus the end float you have off that size. That's how it works, okay? So I've set this up uh, on the disc and then onto the stub axle nut, okay? You could either fix it to the vehicle and then uh, um, put it on the uh, hub however this works quite well so you can see what i'm doing i'm pushing it squarely so i'm getting zero to uh, um, zero point two zero just about okay now that's actually badly set it was i checked it and rechecked it it was at zero a point as two two millimeters okay so what i need to do is now check um, see the end flow difference which is 0 0.2 and 0 0.225 okay so the space I want is 15.2 and that will be a uh, blue um, designation one so I can go ahead and order that fit that and then recheck it so if you look at the figures you might be able to work out there is a difference of 0.3 however the end float is only 0.2 so it's quite generous you get um, 0 0.175 to uh, 0 0.25 which is the 15.2 uh, millimeter spacer which should be correct that is quite generous so uh, um, you've got to fit it and recheck it to make sure it's good so we have the next day TOF100030 which was ordered from Land Rover it was uh, picked up this morning this is the 15.2 millimeter wheel bearing spacer so basically you have to talk the nut up and make sure that it's uh, you check the end float okay and that is it basically the end float is gone and obviously you need to feel as well that the uh, wheel bearings are smooth and not binding all right there's no end float and that's good all right so zero end float so that's it sorted so once it's torqued you have to stake the nut over don't forget this uh, done with a flat chisel okay so it looks like this when you're done easy said easy done i mean this is uh for you guys who don't know how to do wheel bearings i've got videos on it okay um, but this is like a tech detail so it's just the basics you need to know to get on and do the stuff okay all right then so that's that one